love red lips. Let's go down and meet the packet. That's been the best looking man on the river. I don't want the youngest. I want the rich. Hollywood's glittering world has hidden a story far more intriguing than any movie script. In the 1940s, actress Hedy Lamarr dazzled audiences as the most beautiful woman in the world. But there was another shadowy side to her. She was a brilliant inventor who laid the groundwork for technology that would shape the modern world, from Wi-Fi to GPS. You've grown, Jenny. My father's wife's a great lady. I think behind Mrs. Isaiah Poster you'll still find Jenny Hagen. Born Hedwig Eva Kiesler in 1914, Lamar was captivated by engineering from a young age. Her father would explain everything he could about technology, nurturing her curiosity. Yet her path took her away from engineering and onto the silver screen, and at only 18, she found fame and controversy with her role in Ecstasy, a Czech film scandalous enough to be banned in the US and Germany. This film put her on the radar, for better or worse, catching the eye of Fritz Mandel, a powerful arms dealer and fascist sympathizer. Though Hetty initially rebuffed him, she soon found herself charmed by his power and resources and married him, believing she'd found stability. Instead, Mandel trapped her in a gilded cage, controlling her every move and forbidding her from acting. As a dinner guest at his business meetings, she was subjected to long discussions of weapons technology. Though it was suffocating, Lamar absorbed every detail, knowledge that would one day change the course of history. First American I've ever met with a soul. It has a strange effect on me. Now listen, Theodore, you know I wasn't figuring on marriage. Lucky for you, I'm the practical one. We must get married. It is the only way we can get permission to leave Russia. What? To leave Russia? For where? To America. You brute. Who's this lady? I'm his wife. Then you must come with him. To the secret police? Yes. Good, that's where I want to go. In 1937, Lamar orchestrated her daring escape, disguised as her maid and wearing her most valuable jewels. She fled to London, where a fateful encounter with MGM's Louis B. Mayer led her to Hollywood. By the late 1930s, Hetty was a star gracing films and Hollywood parties alongside legends like Howard Hughes. But glamour had its limits. Despite her success, she found herself bored by the roles she was offered, roles that reduced her to a beautiful face. Uh, this time, uh, you must be after something very big. Just how big is it? How do you feel about me now? I have an equiver left in me. Mm -hmm. You've got to convince me of that. Nights like this that drive men like me to women like you for nights like this. Unbeknownst to the public, Hetty turned her energy to inventing. With no formal training but boundless curiosity, she began tinkering in her home lab, sketching designs, and inventing practical gadgets, such as glow-in-the-dark dog collars and a tablet to turn water into soda. Yet her greatest invention was yet to come. When the war news from Europe grew dire, Lamar felt compelled to help. She remembered the U-boat discussions from Mandel's meetings and thought about how torpedoes needed a way to avoid radio jamming. Partnering with avant-garde composer George Antheil, she devised a frequency hopping system to secure radio-guided torpedoes from interference. They used the idea of synchronized music notes jumping between piano keys to design a method for signals to hop frequencies in sync. A concept so advanced, it prefigured the technology we use today in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. However, when Lamar and Antheil pitched this invention to the U.S. Navy, they were dismissed. The Navy couldn't envision using such a complex system in a torpedo, mocking it as impractical. They locked the patent away as classified, shelving a breakthrough that would later prove indispensable in modern communications. You see what I mean? Yes. Yes, I see. But at your department in the morning, what will they say? By that time, you ought to be all set, huh? Oh, but I can't get married in a week. Hey, you aren't on one of those treasure hunts, are you? Treasure hunts? 
Well, then, what did you come up here for, anyway? I came here to ask you to marry me. Hello. Hey, Golden Throwback fans, ready to take a trip down memory lane? Perfect Fifth has you covered with graphic tees that celebrate the music you love. Check out this cassette era design, a tribute to those mixtape days. Or vibe with Melting Vinyl Sunset, bringing back the golden age of records. And for the Patriots, Stars, Stripes, and Strings, combines music and Americana in a style all your own. Get it for yourself or as the perfect gift for the music lover in your life. And right now, get 30% off your order with code THROWBACK30 at checkout. Click the link in the description to shop now. Perfect fifth, wear the rhythm, relive the moments. Lamar continued her Hollywood career and supported the war effort through war bond sales, but her frequency hopping technology lay dormant. Decades passed, the patent expired, allowing engineers in the 1950s to experiment with the technique ultimately integrating it into military communication systems and, later, commercial wireless networks. By the 1990s, Lamar's invention was everywhere, embedded in Wi-Fi, GPS, and cellular technology. As these technologies evolved, her contributions were finally recognized. She received a few late-life awards, though Lamar once quipped, well, it's about time. Yet her life was far from the fairy tale ending she might have imagined. I will go to him. If you go to him, you cannot come back to me. Let me feel the pillows that I may lean upon them. Only a little further than Despite her successes, her personal life remained turbulent. She had six marriages, each ending in disillusionment, and eventually became estranged from her first son, James. Then, after her death in 2000, a shocking secret emerged. James discovered that he was not adopted as he'd believed, but Hetty's biological child, born from an affair with actor John Loder, who had later become her husband and James's adoptive father. By the time Lamar's frequency-hopping invention gained recognition, her life had already faded from Hollywood's memory, and she had retreated from the public eye, disfigured by a series of unsuccessful cosmetic surgeries. Yet her legacy lives on, not just as an icon of beauty, but as the mind behind one of the 20th century's most transformative technologies. Hedy Lamar's life was one of brilliance, heartbreak, and a groundbreaking legacy that reshaped how we communicate today. Now it's time to hear from you. What surprised you most about Hedy Lamar's life? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating stories like this one.